No, I'm, what I'm, what I'm going to have. Give, 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 that, that's all, folks. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ross Miller, and welcome to the Speedwell Garage, Parkton's friendliest Studebaker Packard workshop. Spacer back in. Uh... <laughs> Oops, come on, get in there. There we go. All right, now we have a little bit of bothersome work ahead of us uh, because we have to set the end play of this unit. We have reason to suspect it's not what it should be. Oh, yes, that's right. <clears throat> this is where you have to actually tack it onto the trans? Uh, no, not no, yet. Not yet, okay. Not yet. So. Uh, I've, I've developed my own technique over the years of checking the end play on these. It's uh, when they went to the reactor clutch inside the torque converter, it got much more difficult to check the end play, and they had a special tool that, of course, no one owns anymore for checking the reactor end play, so I had to come up with my own way. Okay. So, this is the way that I do it. If you start, you look down in here, you'll see that the reactor shaft is actually slightly below the, uh, the edge of this thrust washer. Here. Okay. So, make sure everything is pushed down into place. Is it supposed to be that way? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Let me wipe some of the oil out of the way so we can see that a little better. So that was green for a second. I almost felt refreshed. What I wish to know is how far below this surface is the edge of the uh, reactor shaft. So we're going to take a simple measurement here of from the top of the shaft oops, oops, to its shoulder. If you can see that there where I have it touching. Oh, okay. Yeah. Alright. And then we'll write that down with one of the amazing blue sharpies that has reappeared from from Nirvana. And it is four point six four two. Make sure I got that right. Six point four four point six four two. <laughs> wow. Okay. And then we're going to measure from the same point over to this edge of this uh, thrust washer here. Okay. So I'm going to turn him around and we'll get a little bit of tiny bit of error. Oops. Let's stand him up on there and bring him down. Until he touches. Okay. <coughs> so that is four point six two one. And that leaves us with a difference of twenty twenty zero two one. Twenty one thousandths. Mm -hmm. So what is the name of this tool again that you're using to measure? Um uh, Caliper. It's just called a caliper. Okay. I can only think of the German word for a minute. So <laughs> that's fine. We can translate it. Like. Schiebelera. It's a Schiebelera. Fair enough. So this is twenty-one thousandths below that. Okay. <clears throat> oh, well, what does this number mean to you? What this number means to me is that um, when I assemble the converter 
and go to measure the end play by pulling up on the shaft, 21 thousandths of it is wasted, so to speak, because it's just this gap right here, so it's meaningless. Uh, okay. So I did, uh, will subtract that from the overall end play measurement to obtain a more correct <coughs> Perfect. end play. Good to know. Ooh. Which is wonderful. What is that thing again? It's just a thrust washer. There you go. Oh, it's wonderful. Marvelous, darling, marvelous. Okay, life can continue. Yes. So Zsa, Zsa is now in the house. Zsa Zsa Gabor once did a very entertaining advertisement for a Studebaker Lark. Really? She did. Interesting. Yeah. I wonder if we could find that. Oh, you can find it. Okay. This is, uh... Yes? But you're Zsa Zsa Gabor. Oh, that's one of my names. But we're supposed to interview a new Lark owner. But I'm a new Lark owner. You want to see my lovely new car? It's right there in the driveway. I get a car in every color for every day of the week. And I love it. A little snail snot. Like back when men were men and women were women. Yeah, and it was perfectly nice, and everybody was okay with that. No one really wants to deal with Zsa Zsa Gabor in overalls and leather boots <laughs> with hobnails. Well, maybe some people would. Yeah, it all depends. <laughs> oh, but then the phone rang. It's Zsa Zsa Gabor. Yeah. Oh, Darling. Darling. <laughs> Are you talking about me again? Without paying my contract. All right, now we've uh, we put our new we put our new thrust washer on. Uh, now we're going to set this thing up for checking the end play. Okay, for <coughs> for checking the end play, I'm going to put the converter together without uh, benefit of the O-ring because it would just get in the way right now. I'll put a little bit of lube on this shaft. This is we'll be lifting the lifting converter halves off and on several times. So I'm supposing once the mm -hmm. transmission oil is in there for fluid, yeah. it, that will not mix and affect the viscosity nor the performance of the transmission. No, no, it won't, okay. won't affect the thing hardly. Mm -hmm. Come on, honey, move on over. Ah, boy, she fits. We're just going to uh, clamp the two halves of the converter together for the benefit of measuring the end play. So I just use a couple of uh, vice grips for that. So we have uh, have an odd little setup to do for the uh, for the benefit of checking the end play. And since I can't do that just with my hands, I very very gently fasten these vice grips onto the reactor shaft so I can pull it up like that. Sure so think. eventually what will the end play measurement tell you? Uh, <clears throat> because uh, the different coefficient of expansion of different pieces of metal that are inside and the fact that the parts inside the trans inside the torque converter will get hot a lot hotter than the parts on the outside you have to leave some extra space because otherwise as they grow they'll start to rub very hard and once they start to rub very hard then they'll grow even more and then they'll rub even harder and it will self-destruct dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. just say no to self-destructing package <laughs> so i'm going to set up an indicator here oh i thought you were making a pressure cooker yeah <laughs> did this before. So this sticks on to the stub shaft with the magnetic base. And then I bring this around and up. So what is this tool? Uh, this is called a dial indicator. And uh, every every little mark here is one 
one one thousandths of an inch. Ah. So you can measure very fine motions. So two, two one thousandths of an inch is just about a sheet of paper. And if I recall correctly, we're aiming for about 17 thousandths on this particular assembly. I'll have to look it up and see. I think it's 10 to 17. I'm going to have to bring that down a little bit lower. Make sure the needle is deflected a little bit. Yep. Good. <clears throat> Then if we like, if we can't do math in our heads, we can set this to zero. Very good. So, all right, now I just need to get something to, that I can grab the reactor shaft with to pull it up. It's all just a little bit awkward, but it gets the job done. Just like some people. So is this methodology something you had devised? Yeah. <clears throat> no, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm going to <laughs> dip, 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 that, That's all, folks. <laughs> what I'm going to do <clears throat> is slowly pry the uh, reactor shaft up, and uh, we'll see how much it moves. OK. It moved. 48,000. So we'll see if it goes back down. Oh, that's perfect. That means we're getting good repeatability. So. Yep. Moved a total of 48,000. Okay. Now, if you remember, when we were measuring the uh, the gap between the reactor and the reactor shaft, it was uh, 21 thousandths. Mm -hmm. That means that we have 27 thousandths reactor end play. And I don't remember if that's good or not, but I'll look in the book and it will tell me. <laughs> Thank goodness for charts and books. Yeah, really, because I can't keep all this stuff in my head. Just a moment. Well, some things are repeatable. Okay. So, uh, the book says they would like the end play to be within uh, 10 to 17. Wow. So, we need 10 thousandths less. Okay. Well, we need seven. We have to um, make up between 17 and 10 thousandths less and then we will end up with the end play where we want. Okay? One or two ways to do that. There's the factory approved way and then there's the ways you do to get things done. If you don't have, <laughs> if you don't have an infinite selection of thrust washers to play with. And you don't have a factory. Yes, and we don't have a factory and all those people are dead. <laughs> so we take our setup off here. Get it out of the way. Okay, the, the factory authorized method for adjusting this would be this little washer that's now stuck like crazy in here. Let's see if I can get him to come out without a lot of agony. That's how most movies are based. There we go. Yay. Same day. Yay. So, this particular thrust washer is 0.88 thick. So we would like 1.98 thick at least, which may or may not exist. So we may have to do another trick. 